When this airplane was stored in Henry's garage, he had the wings in a shed beside the garage and a grass fire went through his yard and, uh, and burnt the wings up. And these are the wings here. This, this is what remains of the wings of this airplane. Welcome to season two, episode 37 of Plane Savers. Hello everybody, welcome back after the holiday break. It's been, it's been a long, been a while. It's actually kind of nice to get the holidays behind you. All right, Stella, tell the folks at home what you're up to. Well, I started paint stripping the rest of this, uh, of this uh, piece of fuselage, uh, about, from like the tail or the rudder end to um, about here. And I know that uh, I think Benji and Chucky, they already started the other day doing this and I'm just doing the second layer. Um, I'm just doing the second layer and then after that I'm kind of like taking a little bit of the rust off and we've come all about this far right here. What the heck is the fox moth doing in there? We're gonna go find my father and figure out what's going on with the fox moth. And finally, got a super awesome surprise for you guys. Um, Chris, my buddy in North Bay, the historian, has found an awesome picture of one of our DC-3s that really opens up a brand new history and a brand new um, story. And that's the amazing thing about these DC-3s is the stories go on and on. So at the end of the episode, I'm gonna show you the picture that is really, Really cool of one of the DC-3s, but for now, uh, let's go find my father and get an update on the fox moth. Yeah, what you looking for? Oh, just looking at the uh, condition of the wood in the, in the back of this airplane, it's very good. You know, Henry had this thing stored away in a dry building for 56 years. It survived very well from um, the wood in the thing. This damage here, of course, in the low part of the airplane, and this is where all the moisture would have been. Like the airplane's on its side right now. So this is, is accumulation of, of uh, moisture and dirt and stuff in the airplane. So this is quite common to have to change this part. It's also quite common to change it if you, on skis, knock your skis off on rough drifts. This is what you're gonna break. So there's repair schemes in the book that we change this here section, which we'll be changing. But right now we have it in a, Patisserie. This is, uh, hey, Benjamin? Benjamin, come here for a minute. Yes. This is called a rotisserie. That's a French word. What does that mean? Rotisserie means, uh, that's a, it's like a barbecue, basically. You turn around something above a fire, so it makes a crusty, tasty layer around the bake. So when you when you go in and, and buy a, a chicken in a yes. store and turn it over, that's exactly. rotisserie. Exactly. And so uh, this is called a rotisserie. Yes. But it's for cars, not okay. Not right. for. So it means it turns around. Like rotisserie in French means rotate. Yes. Good. And now I'll know. When next time I when I'm taking off and it's time to rotate, I'll write. I'll yell rotisserie. For it's normally used for. Um, when you're restoring cars, like you turn, put the car in, uh, and you turn the car upside down so you work on the floor or the bottom or the side of the car. And, uh, but we've uh, changed it over from a, a car rotisserie to an airplane rotisserie by putting these bars in here. And now we can roll the airplane up on its side and work on here rather than trying to be underneath the airplane working. And we can roll the airplane all over this, this is the undercarriage here. We put this undercarriage together after we, uh, you know, we got to strip it all down and x-ray it. And these here, believe it or not, is the exhaust coming off the engine. 
This is for the cabin heat. This is for the cockpit heat. So if you look at the size of that little hole, don't expect a whole lot of heat. This is not a cold weather, even though they did fly them in very cold weather. Um, you, you were probably very well dressed in this airplane. When this airplane was stored in Henry's garage, he had the wings in a shed beside the garage and a grass fire went through his yard and, uh, and burnt the wings up. And these are the wings here. This, this is what remains of the wings of this airplane. But the reason we wanted all this is it tells us and gives us a pattern of all the fittings that we need. All the fittings are here and the wires are here and then we'll, we'll be able to uh, duplicate these when we get another set of wings because all the fittings are here and this was not a this was not a very uh, this fire was a grass fire it wasn't a very intense hot fire I can tell that by by just looking at it. the fire was not any really hotter than a campfire and because uh, nothing really melted or distorted it's, it's just uh, burnt the wooden fabric off the wings so we got no wings and I'm looking for a set of wings and uh, I can even use fox moth wings or tiger moth wings so here's the wings my father will need to build to complete the fox moth and look at all these pictures folks so I love vintage pictures of airplanes folks uh, because pictures are really um, they tell a story and they uh, it's amazing because you can't uh, exaggerate I guess you can Photoshop but uh, you know, as stories of aircraft grow, uh, they can get embellished, but uh, having a raw picture of something is really, really cool. Uh, speaking of stories and crazy stories, uh, one of our DC-3s, my favorite DC-3, WZS, has qu had quite uh, the story, especially in the last few years. We got to do uh, the D-Day jump. Uh, we got to fly with, of course, Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden, which was absolutely amazing. And, of course, something that is very near and dear to my heart, uh, the Stanley Cup. Getting to fly with the Stanley Cup uh, was so, so cool. But if you're familiar with the aircraft, uh, the, the most important picture uh, that we have ever found of WZS uh, was this picture taken at the Brussels airport right after World War II. And these are some very important passengers. They're liberated POWs and concentration camp survivors being saved. And uh, you can imagine the hell that these guys went through. And you can almost see a glimmer of smiles and, and happiness to be free. And, and WZS, this very aircraft actually helped save that. So moving forward, another picture that Chris found of course, we're going to get to the picture I promised uh, <laughs> at the beginning of the video, but another picture Chris found uh, earlier was a picture of WZS right after World War II uh, being uh, converted to the Canadian version of uh, the C-47 and being uh, outfitted to ferry back to Canada. Now, here's where the picture uh, I promised this morning comes in. Back in March 1948, WZS was given a rescue mission to the top of the world. In fact, actually Arctic Bay. It was dubbed Operation Dodds. Its task was to rescue Miss Edith Dodds and an Inuit patient. We will learn more about this heroic mission later on in an article that's coming out and I'll make sure to share it with you guys. But for now, we got this amazing picture from Arctic Bay. Uh, this is so cool. The one thing that pops out right off the back is how the pilot is fueling out of the window, out of the window, the same windows that you've seen in the, in the concentration camp survivors pictures. Uh, that aircraft actually set a record. That was the highest any aircraft has ever flown without skis to that point. Of course, WZS handled it no problem without having skis, but that was a very cool little tidbit. So when you take into account the whole picture of this aircraft working for Buffalo Airways, you know, had this amazing history throughout the war with D-Day, liberated concentration camp survivors. And then after the war, uh, providing, you know, rescue missions within Northern Canada. This is just a whole picture of this airplane that just really makes me proud to work around these aircraft.